All right. Let's see here. Testing volume. Test, test. Everyone hear me all right? Music okay? Awesome, awesome. Give me just a few more seconds and I'll be starting this up. I'm just sharing this a couple of places. Yes, Link, I'll be starting soon. Okay, so, so, today's episode guys, oh my god, I've got so much to say, so much to praise, my man Gasper, oh my freaking god man, my, my boy Gasper, seriously, Took it like a man today. Like, that was the most emotional part of today's episode. Gasper is the real fucking MVP of today's episode. That was just absolutely moving. What Gasper did. And I've got some screenshots to share with you guys today. I've also got uh, some news in regards to episode 0. Of High School DD Hero, as well as uh, Sheen High School DD being released, 
and a tweet from a Kuneko cosplayer that I was kind of flirting with on Twitter that's really funny. So I'm going to be sharing that with you guys. Aw, oh, you're three weeks behind because you're watching the dub. Yeah, it kind of sucks that the dub doesn't come out the same as the, uh... At the same time as the, uh... Sub does. But anyway... Today's episode was fantastic. I was not expecting to see six matches. Were you guys expecting to see six matches? Like, seriously. Six matches in one episode. That's... That's incredible. And unfortunately, I could not get screenshots from all the matches, but I got screenshots from the ones that I thought that mattered most. And we're going to head into those in just a moment with some awesome screens that I took. Oh yeah, man. I th the sub is just a lot better in my opinion because the dialogue actually matches the light novel in a lot of case. In a lot of cases, when it comes to the dub, they have to kind of redo things like, you know how Issei in the dub he calls Riaz Riaz instead of uh, President, and there's a dialogue in the light novel that he actually has to call her President in order for it to work for that scene, which is, you know, the sauna scene that happened two episodes ago. And I was just like, uh, I wonder how uh, Funimation is going to take care of this little problem here, because for the last three seasons they've had Issei call her by her actual name instead of call her president. Hmm, how are they going to, <laughs> how are they going to deal with that? But you know, I haven't seen the dub for Hero yet, I've been sticking to the sub because if not the sub, I cannot hear Shizuka Ito and Yokohi Kasa's silk and smooth as satin, sexy voices. It just wouldn't work for me. You know, Jamie Marchi as Riaz is okay, but I really prefer Yokohi Kasa. You understand? <laughs> Well, I can understand you in a, a little bit on that one. Like, there were some great scenes in a Season 2 bit of the dub. Like, the dialogue... Well, not the dialogue, but the actual lines that were said uh, during, you know, the volleyball match. When Issei got hit in the balls was absolutely hilarious. Like, I love those lines. But anyway, uh, we got six people watching now, so I'm going to go ahead and break into some slides of today's episode so uh, I can uh, kind of start going over some things with you guys. Let's see here. Alright, so, to start us off today, we started with... Kiba's match, which was pretty freaking awesome. Hi, how's it going, side? Nice to see you. But anyway, so we started off with Kiba's match today, and it was pretty intense, guys. Kiba's match was definitely pretty intense. You guys might have also noticed that, you know, with the last... Starting with this episode, the designs have gotten a lot better than they were in the past. Like, the first... The first arc of the season, I thought was really good when it came to the designs. And then, you know, slowly when it reached, you know... Starting into the second part to the second half of Lion's Heart, the first half of Lion's Heart, 
I thought that the designs kind of slacked off a bit, but they seem to have picked up again now starting in the later half where we're actually getting into the tournament because they look really damn good. They look excellent. Kiba's face looks excellent in this shot right here. Uh, Solo Link, I think the dub for Ep7 should come out today at some point. Actually, if you click the link in the description, that'll take you to the sub, the subbed version, not the dubbed. But it will definitely take you to the site to where you can actually find uh, the dub as well, so you can click it if you want to. But I mean, Kiba's match, guys, was incredible. It was fast-paced, which, you know, I wasn't... Which I was kind of expecting. Anyway, because, you know, it's hard to fit, on, fit in every single, you know, action sequence so you can fit six matches into an episode. I thought it was a real blessing that we got six matches in one entire 23-minute episode. That was really great. But uh, Kiba's match was really spectacular. The two knights facing off against each other. I totally forgot to write the new the new character introduction names when I was uh, setting everything up. So if you guys know them, uh, please let me know in the chat or in the comments after the stream is done. But uh, what surprised me, right, it was I didn't know that Kiba had this form as a balance breaker. Like, you know, like the Knight of, uh... The Knight from, uh, Bell's side said, I thought that your balance breaker was, you know, the Sword of Betrayal, because, you know, in Season 2, that's what his balance breaker was. But apparently, later on, he gains another form of balance breaker. Which, I'm guessing TNK did not include in their... And their portion when they were doing uh, season two, but he has a new form of balance breaker where he like creates his own knights and they fight by his side, and he wound up winning the match against uh, Bell's knight in the first round, which was really spectacular. The action sequences were great. I was very very pleased. Uh, Solo, I think it's just going to take some time, man. I mean, if you started off on the dub, then you're going to be more used to the dub than the sub. It's just going to take some getting used to, you know? The more you watch it, the more you'll get used to it. Pretty much. It's as simple as that. How many seasons did Passione sign up for? Uh, there has been... Some people saying that they that the uh, director said that they have signed up for at least two more seasons, but nothing has been officially confirmed yet. I know I stated in a past stream that you know the director and the voice actors verified that they're looking forward to another season, and. Uh, that news was actually given to me by a native of Japan who was commenting on one of the past uh, previews for one of the episodes. So, if everything pays off and if that news is accurate, we will be getting at least two more seasons. And the next one will be even more intense, even more serious, because we're going to be breaking into season 11 and 12, and those get really serious, guys. Like, if you think the drama just came back a little bit in this season, just wait until we get to season 5, where we're going over volume 11 and 12, and you will be on the edge of your seat.
Alright, so moving on to the next match that we encountered. We have Koneko and Rosewise going into the second match. And their match was also pretty freaking intense, just the animation was incredible, guys. We have uh, the gravity control rook that went up against uh, Koneko and Rosewise. And like I said, I'm sorry that I forgot to put the uh, names of the characters. I so meant to write down, put their names down there for you guys. But uh, if you know them by chance, and you've read the light novel, uh, please put them uh, either in the chat or in the uh, comments after the stream. But uh, the match between Rosewise, Koneko, and the rest of the rooks from Team Bell was pretty freaking intense. I'm gonna get some awesome Koneko shots that I loved. Here's Rose Wise, uh, she's uh, firing off her massive spells. Aw, oh, thanks man. I'm glad you like the music. Yeah, uh, that's Rosewire firing off her spells right there. Really freaking awesome scene. I just liked how they did the animation sequences for that. And then, of course, we get Koneko heading into her twin tail serious form of the uh, Nekomata transformation, where she gains two tails instead of one. And according to Issei, that's uh, the super serious form. Or at least one of them. But the the battle sequences when Koneko was punching uh, the boulder guy, which I forget his name, but it was just freaking incredible. And I wanted to catch you know a snapshot, you know, right before the animation started, kind of showing the fight scene in action. But I couldn't get it because it was just going so fast, so I had to, you know, kind of make do with some great stills. But I mean... The, the designs starting from the tournament just look incredibly better compared to the last episode. This is my favorite, my favorite stance that uh, Koneko took during the battle. Koneko didn't die. You know they don't actually die in the game, bro. <laughs> Koneko didn't die. She got taken out, though, but she didn't die. But anyway, uh... I'll get to explaining that for you in a minute, Solo Link, as to, you know, the surprise tack that kind of took them off guard. So anyway, uh, starting out with Kuniko, Rosewise suddenly gets attacked by uh, the Gravity, the Gravity Rook, and I forget his name, but uh, she gets attacked by him. He says, you're wide open, and all of a sudden she's being attacked by his gravity magic. This is what uh, he looks like right here with his sword. I really think they did a great job with him. Do I think they're going to still do 12 eps per season? Uh, more than likely. I would have to say more than likely. Well, the thing is, Solo Link, that if they were to go more episodes into one season, that would break into another novel. And the novel setup has been, you know, two volumes per season. If they were to go any further, 
they would be breaking into volume 13 and 14, which is basically um, side stories. Which is basically side stories. Not only that, but toward the end of 13, it actually starts to pick up, and that would actually mess up the configuration that they were doing for, you know, the adaptations. That's what happened with TNK as well. So they tried to fit too much into one into one season. And because of that, stuff that wasn't supposed to be introduced yet was introduced and they had to do a whole retcon this season. So it's better if they stick to the two novels and the 12 episodes because that way, you know, they won't be, you know, having to stop the next season in the middle of an arc which would really suck for a lot of the fans. Nobody wants an arc to end right in the middle where the action is about to start. So it's better if they stick with the 12 episodes, in my opinion. It's better for the whole format. But anyway, getting on with the rest of the uh, slideshows here. We're about to get to the part where the plan that uh, Koneko and Rose Wise had uh, had for defeating the Rooks of Bale's team took place. And this actually goes into effect with my boy Gasper, because I think like when Gasper did his plan, he kind of you know copied what uh, Koneko, no not what Koneko and Rose Wise did, but what uh, the team the uh, Bell's Rooks did in the match against Koneko and uh, Rose Wise. So here we go. So in this scene, Koneko and Rose Wise start talking about, you know, the tolerance of the rock, the rock rook, you know, if he can tolerate the gravity spell. And Koneko's job was to wear him down to where he wouldn't be able to, you know, withstand it much longer. And it worked. Because you see him in this scene right here. Getting attacked by the spell. So apparently the Rook that controls gravity can control pretty much everything. He, does, he can't control over who he's attacking. Pretty much if you're within his space, you're going to feel it. And because Koneko wore down the Rock Rook, he was no longer able to withstand the magic, and he also started to feel the gravity pull. Which then helped Rosewise formulate her next, you know, massive spell attack, which helped them annihilate, which we thought at first annihilate, you know, both of them in the match. Both of Bell's Rooks in the match. However, it didn't quite work out that way. Because, you know, here's Issei and Kiba, you know, looking at the match, and Kiba starts to notice something. One of the rooks from Bell's side is missing. After one of after the gravity rook gets taken down, he says again to Rosewise, he says, Didn't I mention earlier that you were wide open? And that causes Rosewise to look down and she realizes that the other rook is missing. And that is when the surprise attack happens. Is this from the dub? No, this is from the sub. So, uh... If you're watching this, yes, all this is taken from the actual sub. Which means, if you're watching the dub, you're going to get spoiled on this episode, but... You know, it comes with the territory.
But anyway, Rosewise looks and she under and she notices that the Rock Rook is missing from Belle's team after her attack launched. And that is when they start to feel the gravity pull again. Because right before the gravity rook vanished or was actually taken out, he activated his gravity spell again and put both Rosewise and Koneko under, uh, under gravity lock again. Which then resulted with a surprise attack from the Rock Rook right before he perished. This is the scene right here where the Rock Rook of Bell's team makes his surprise attack on Koneko. And it was a pretty intense attack, guys. I must say that was a pretty intense attack. And that is where Koneko takes the hit from the surprise attack right here. It was really sad to see Koneko take the loss. I know Issei, Issei was definitely feeling it. Because Kiba said, don't let it you know, upset you during your, during your next match. Which we're about to get to Issei's match in a minute. Which was absolutely, absolutely hilarious. Like, I mean, talk about a man of culture. But seriously, uh... Koneko and Rosewise's match was really... Really well done. All around, I would have to say I was very... Very pleased with today's episode. Just how well it was executed. I mean, six matches, guys. Six matches of the tournament were played out today. I mean, that's better than what we've been getting out of Food Wars with the matches recently. Especially with the team battles, you know? I mean, I think the last episode we got, what, one match? Alright, Pleb King, I'll catch you later, man. Thanks again for tuning in. But yeah, I mean, Koneko takes the hit, and the next scene is we see, you know, Rosewise apologizing to Koneko for, you know, letting her guard down and not noticing sooner. Ah, uh, well, you know, things happen, man. I mean, I think Rose Wyatt actually knew, actually thought that she had both of them in the attack. Because that was a pretty widespread attack. And she actually did hit them, it's just that, you know, apparently their stamina was a little bit better. Which is why they were able to do the surprise attack. Because they did perish after the surprise attack ended. Koneko and Rosewise did win the match. But I mean, I mean, look at... Sorry. Look at the designs, guys. Like, honestly, they look a whole lot better compared to earlier in the second half. Don't you, don't you think so? I mean, they look great. Yes, the animation is top-notch period I loved it 
I was a little worried yesterday, you know, because the preview didn't come out like it usually does on Mondays or, you know, a couple days before. So I was wondering, you know, if they were taking more time to work on it. And someone already said that, you know, the episodes were already made, but I'm not really sure what the, what the problem was with the uh, preview delay. But regardless, the designs look uh, fantastic. The designs look a whole lot better starting this episode, and so does the animation. Alright, getting into the third match. And this is the most hilarious match out of today's episode, guys. Oh my god, I cannot. I'm speechless. I'm almost speechless and I'm not sure, I'm not quite sure how to relay this message to you guys. But I mean, talk about a man of culture. Issei. Issei's. Issei's opponent. From Sayadogre's team. The Bishop. Oh my god. Her plan was almost perfect. Her plan was almost perfect, you know, because. She started off doing it right, you know, she got him off guard by, you know, go ahead, by going ahead and stripping down for him so that he wouldn't be able to use that skill. Pretty much. She used his... How can I put this? She used the effect that his skill would do against him. Used a part of his skill against him. And it was working. Because, you know, here's Issei, he's getting serious, he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight this the way I would fight things. A real serious mode, and then the next thing you know, we got... We got the bishop from Sidog already undressing. She's like, well, you're going to try to undress me anyway, so I'll just, you know, use that skill against you by undressing beforehand to leave you speechless and kind of wide open for an attack. Which, you know, was a good plan, but she messed up in the end, and she paid dearly for it, and we're about to get to those scenes in just a moment. Alright, so here we go. I mean, you see the bishop, Cyrogue's bishop, just start to undress and, you know, get ready to just sexually tease uh, Issei during their match as a way to keep him off guard so that he won't be able to launch an attack. And it worked for the most part, pretty much. She even had the crowd speechless. Which, you know, was hilarious. Especially Azazel. He, he was especially speechless during this whole scene. But, uh... We see her start to get undressed. And then... Unfortunately, she makes the wrong choice. Because Issei is, Issei asks, you know, so, so what are you going to do next? It's like giving him a strip tease, and she, he's like so anticipating that, you know, he'll, she'll take off her bra first. But instead, she takes off her underwear first, and that was the final draw for Issei. That was the final draw for Issei because he quite literally gives her a dragon shot <laughs> up the ass. Like, I know that sounds bad, but that's exactly what he did. He literally gave her a dragon shot up the ass. And it was hilarious. Because he just... <laughs> 
he gets ready and he's like, No! That's not it! You're wrong! You were supposed to take off your bra. And he gets ready to fire off that dragon shot. And it was, let me, I was just speechless, guys. I was just like, oh. Huh. Really? Like, how could you not notice? Like, how could she not understand that Issei is a breast guy? Yeah, I was like, I'm just sitting there, I was like, how could you disappoint? How could you fail in your plan? You obviously weren't paying attention. Issei is a boob guy. Hello, Old Pie Dragon Song. You know, he's powered by breast. But I mean, it was just a hilarious scene, guys, because the next one, we have her taking it as a total surprise. She's like, uh, what? No way! I can't believe this! And it was just absolutely hilarious. I'm pretty sure we're going to see, like, some clips of this exact scene. This whole animation sequence of Issei's battle and shooting that dragon shot on YouTube here in a couple of days. Or probably later today. There's probably one up right now. But uh, it's probably going to get a ton of likes. But, yep, that's how Issei ended up winning the third match, guys. I mean, you know, he got a nice strip tease there in, in the first part. But, you know, he's a boob guy and she messed up bad by not understanding that, you know. Fired off that dragon shot. It's like, no, I'm sorry. You were supposed to take off your bra. <laughs> oh, well, you know, hook and miss. And then Issei's next expression is just pointless. He's, he's just... He goes back to the team and he's like, No. She was supposed to take off her bra. Instead, she took off her underwear. I don't understand. It was just a hilarious, a hilarious battle outright, guys. I really enjoyed Issei's, Issei's match today. The next match that we're about to break into is probably, I gotta say, the most emotional and by far the most brave out of today's matches. My, my man Gasper really stood up for the team today. Like he really did an excellent job and we're about to break into those screenshots right now because guys, they were absolutely fantastic. Like. I'm going to tell you guys right now, while I was getting these screenshots, I started tearing up just going back through the scenes that Gasper went through because I was just like, oh my god, talk about a man, a man above, above men, you know? He even had Issei in tears. I mean, this, this battle right here, the fourth match was absolutely fantastic. What do I think would happen if she actually pulled it off right? Uh, more than likely Issei would still end up attacking at some point. It might have taken a little bit longer though. But it was just hilarious how it was done. It was really well done. I loved it. But anyway, I mean, look at Zenobia's eyes in today's episode guys look at her whole design in this one shot this is one of my favorite shots of Zenobia right here uh, starting the fourth match it looks 
incredible. A lot better than it did earlier in the uh, earlier in the arc. Don't you agree? Like they really put in some extra work to make the designs look a lot better. But I mean, the fourth match was definitely the most impactful, guys. Like, when I was watching it, I was totally in tears. I was like, oh my god, Gasper. Like, seriously. It was just a beautiful scene because here we have Gasper volunteering to go out with Zenovia. And you know, it's not something, it's something I don't think anime fans would expect from Gasper because he is, you know, a shy, a shy member of the team. He's always been, you know, a shy character, one to shy away from people. But in today's episode, in the fourth match, Oh my god, did he make a manly move. Like, seriously. Gasper is today's MVP, guys. Let's just put it that way. I mean, the Reddit said it best. Gasper was today's MVP. That whole scene where he just repeats the lines that Issei told him in the last episode, or actually, not the last episode, but episode 9, I think it was episode 9, where Issei goes over with Gasper, you know, a man will always stand up, a man will always protect women, a man will never give up. And the whole time during today's episode, in the fourth match, when I heard Gasper repeat those phrases, even put together with the right scenes, I mean, everything was just executed beautifully. I literally fell to tears. I was just like, oh my god, this is beautiful. They've made me cry twice in a row. This match is freaking epic. But let's get on with the rest of the slides because, I mean, they are fantastic guys. So here we have, you know, Riaz. She starts to understand that, you know, Gasper really wants to go out there and give it his all. But she doesn't understand what Gasper is actually going to be going up against quite yet. Because the members from Sidog's team are some to be reckoned with. But she, she recognizes that Gasper wants to give it a try and she allows it. I mean, breaking, going back to the designs, to the designs, right? Look how well Riaz is done in today's episode compared to earlier in this arc when it first started it looks fantastic don't you agree i mean she looks fantastic Yeah, Eric, I mean, Jasper really, he seriously took it to the next level today in his development. That was a huge development point, which is why today's, ep today's episode is actually a really important one, because it's one of Jasper's major development parts. He has another major development part in later installments as well. But this was... One of the first developments besides the one that happened in Season 2 when he was first introduced. This is the second development part during the match and he gets serious about it. He's determined, he's ready to go out there and give, it, and give his all for Riaz and the rest of the team.
but it was just a beautiful match guys let's go ahead and let's break into some of the battle action though so here starting off we have uh, Zenobia going up against one of Syrogue's I forget what piece he is but uh, apparently his ability allows him to take on dragon aspects in the full so he is able to actually transform into dragons and you know during the first part of the match it looked like you know Bell's team was actually afraid of uh, Zenovia Oh, definitely, Eric. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to get to that slide later on where, you know, Issei just, you know, falls to tears and tells Riaz and says, like, you need to watch this match because Gasper's out there giving it his all for you. He's putting his life on the line for you. He's fighting with his life on the line and giving it his all, so you need to continue watching this president. And, you know, she... It gets moved by those lines and she continues to watch those are some very very moving scenes and I'm going to get to those slides here in just a second but starting off in the match we have Zenobia going up against uh, one of the members from Bell's side that actually is able to transform into dragons and like I said it looked like you know at first Bell's team was a little bit afraid of Zenobia. Going into the next scene, uh, Riaz is extremely surprised by this, by this development. That Cyrog actually managed to get that member on their team because he is extremely powerful, and she starts, you know, wondering if it's going to be all right. And that's when things start to get a lot more serious. Because in the next scene is uh, one where we have uh, Zenobia and Gasper. Together there's Gasper surrounded by Zenobia and his uh, bats formation. And what he does is he manages to block a couple of attacks with his skill to keep Zenobia guarded while she charges up her attack pretty much and that's going into the next scene here Zenobia starts to get charged up but unfortunately the other member on Bell's side that uh, is fighting Zenobia their sacred gear has the ability to pretty much I'm not sure if it's like a cancellation or whatnot but it stops Zenobia in her tracks with a curse pretty much Zenobia is put under a curse and that's the this is that second member right here so we have, you know, we have the dragon member that can transform into dragons, and we also have this member whose sacred gear, you know, kind of looks like a boosted gear in a way, but its ability is a, is a lot more is a lot different because it pretty much stops an attack in its tracks or makes a weapon unresponsive. Because here we have Zenobia find out that Durandal won't answer to her anymore. It won't answer her during the match because she is put under a curse from the sacred gear of this user right here. And speaking of speaking of this sacred gear, gear wielder, right? Yeah, curse seal, that's it, right? That's right, Jay. 
the curse seal. And speaking of this sacred gear wielder that uh, is on Cyrog's team, did you guys happen to pick up on the voice actress that is the voice actor or actress that is doing this character? If I'm not mistaken, it's the exact same one that plays Ikumi Mito in uh, Food Wars. Because it sounded exactly like her. I'll have to double check by looking it up, but I'm pretty sure it's the same one. But here we have Zenobia realize that, you know, Durandal is not responding to her anymore. She can't wield it. And this is when, this right here is when Gasper goes into action. And, oh my god guys, it was incredibly, just so incredibly moving to see what Gasper did. Like I, I like I told you, I was in tears. Like literally, just freaking in tears the whole time. I could not stop crying because of the scenes that Gasper went through and what he did. But Zenobia realizes that she can't control Durandal anymore during the match because she's put under the curse seal. And then Gasper steps up and Zenobia says, you know, I'm sorry Gasper, but it looks like I'm going to end up being useless during the match. And Gasper's like, no, there's a way out of this. I know how to cure this curse. And he gets to work on that. And let me tell you, just the whole sequence that he went through was incredible. He had everything ready. He makes the spell circle. We have Zenobia sitting in the center. And then you have, you know, Riaz gets over to communicating with him through, you know, their transmission. And she asks, Gasper, can you, can you cure the curse that's on Zenobia so that she can participate? And he's like, yes, I can, but it's going to require a little bit of time. And that is where Gasper decides to take it upon himself to stall for time. And man, does he take it all the way, guys. Seriously, I mean, the whole purpose that I used the Gasper thumbnail was because I wanted to, you know, exaggerate on just how well Gasper did this episode. Because he is the main star of this episode, there is no doubt about it. He is the MVP. He moved everyone on the team. He moved everyone on the team to tears. But Gasper, you know, he says... He says to Riaz, he's like, yes, I can cure the curse by applying some of Issei's blood to... to the spell seal. That should help, but it's going to take a little bit of time in order for the curse to wear off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stall for time. And Riaz tries to stop him, right? But it's not going to work because Gasper is determined. He's like, no, I have to do this. I have to step up so that this will work out. And guys, you know, just me trying to talk about it right now is almost making me want to start tearing up again because it was just a beautiful scene. Just the, the dialogue was absolutely fantastic. The scenes and the dialogue put together, very, very dramatic, very serious, and you know, you felt something. You f if you didn't feel your heart clench seeing the scenes that Gasper went through in today's episode, I don't know what to say to you, but the, they were absolutely beautiful and very moving, very touching, very deep. 
At least to me. Next scene, we have Gasper take his stance against the dragon transformer. And this is where Riaz starts to, you know, see the pain that Gasper is going through because, you know, like I said earlier, he's normally not that type of person that would, you know, stand out in the battle like this. And that's why I'm saying, you know, a lot of anime only fans are definitely going to be surprised by today's episode and seeing just how well Gasper, you know, became a man. A, a man of a man, I can't say it. Man of uh, still can't say it. A man among men. But, uh, man, did he really show up. A lot of the team members today. I don't want to really say show up, but he really took a stance today in growth. Some serious development on Gasper's part because he really, really pulls it off. Buying time so that Zenobia can heal up for the victory. And it was just an absolutely beautiful sequence. Next next shot, you know, Gasper takes the direct hit from the dragon transformer that's on Bell's side. And everyone is just, you know, kind of standing there in awe because Gasper gets blown away by the attack. He gets, you know, thrown against a wall because of it. And everyone's in shock, you know, just to see, you know, Gasper take these attacks because in the first couple of in the first two seasons even in the third Gasper was still you know having problems you know confronting people you know wanting to become stronger you know he wanted to become stronger but he was also you know suffering from being a shut-in at the same time as well but in today's episode he really like he seriously took a huge step in growth with his character and everyone on Riaz's team was shocked by it their jaws are hanging down they're just like I can't believe Gasper is actually doing this alright Eric I'll catch you later man thanks for tuning in But Riaz starts to see the pain that Gasper is going through, right? And she sees how he just keeps standing up. And he says, A man will never, will always stand back up. And he gets back up and he goes at the dragon again. And he gets attacked again and then we have Riaz here you know covering our eyes because she's like I can't watch I can't watch this scene that Gasper is going through he's going through so much pain I can't believe I let him go out there and then we get to the big part where Issei gets touched because of you know what Gasper is going through and he says to Riaz that you need to keep watching because, you know, Gasper's out there giving it his all for you. He sacrificed himself. So you need to keep watching, Riaz. You need to keep watching, President. And Gasper, you know, he still hasn't given up. He says, a man must protect a woman. I mean, these whole scenes even the scenes that were chosen when he was saying those lines that were quoted from uh, episode 9 when he was talking with Issei were just so perfect in today's episode. The scenes were perfect, the dialogue was perfect, they matched perfectly, and I'm saying the word perfect too much, but you know, that's just exactly what they were. They were just perfect scenes for that, for those dialogues. Next scene, you know, 
we have Gasper leaning over. You know, he's worn out and he's still he's still standing up to the Dragon Transformer, even though the Dragon Transformer and the Mage have already told him, you know, you're not going to be able to win against us. Just give up. And the next line that comes out of Gasper's line, mouth is, a man will never give up, regardless of how dire the circumstances. And, you know, just like I said, the whole sequence was just so moving and dramatic. So, you know, I ask you guys again, I ask you, do you really think that because of the new art design that the series has lost its dramatic influence, that it's lost its seriousness when it comes down to it? I don't think so. But it's just, it was just an absolutely beautiful battle between the fourth match just totally blew me away seeing how brave Gasper became to help them take the victory in the fourth match. The next scene is one of the most dramatic. You know, Gasper, he gets stomped on and he still hasn't given up. He holds out his hand in the air and he's just like, a man will never give up. I will continue to fight on for our team and our victory and our president. And this is where it starts to relate to the rest of the team that, you know, their goal is going to be to wear down the rest of the team that's on Bell's side and Sidog so that Issei can fight against him in the next battle. Everyone starts to kind of understand what their goal is going to be. And here we have Issei, you know, after looking at Gasper lying there on the ground like that, he's just in tears, you know, hearing, you know, that Gasper took his advice and using it in such a good way. And he's just like, he looks over to Riaz, who is standing there, and she's, he says, President, you need to keep watching this. Don't look away. Keep watching because Gasper's out there, you know, giving it your all, his all for you. He's risking himself, putting himself on the line for you, going through this pain. So you need to keep watching. And she wipes the tears away from her eyes, and she's like, you're right, he say, and she stands there bravely, you know, watching Gasper make his manly moves. And then in the next scene, Zenobia shows back up. The curse has worn off, and she gets ready to fire off X Durandal's grand attack, which helps them, you know, conclude the victory. The next scene that I have of Zenobia is also really touching because she says while she's charging up that this is the best I can do for you, Gasper, for, you know, being the sacrifice to stall for time and, you know, taking one for the team. And here's Gasper's secret move, the one that I was talking about earlier during the stream where I thought he, you know, kind of took some advice from the match between uh, Koneko, uh, Rosewise, and the two other rooks of Bell's team where they did the sneak attack. Here's Gasper's sneak attack right here. He activates... Uh, uh, Valander View or whatever. I can't remember what the, the exact name of his uh, Forbidden View his forbidden view uh, sacred gear which stops time and he stops the two other team members that are on Cyrogue's team in their tracks allowing Zenovia right before Gasper retires to fire off X Durandal's attack and that was just an absolutely epic match guys so moving so deep and drama I mean it was just beautiful 
definitely the match of today. The match of the day. It was just a beautiful match. Alright, and so, moving on to our next bit that we have. I wanted to show you guys a uh, Koneko cosplay that was uh, put out on Twitter by one of my favorite cosplayers. And I think that it is absolutely marvelous. I mean, don't you guys agree? And I've got a funny, like I sent her a tweet as well. On uh, in reply to her cosplay. And the response that she gave me was hilarious, so. It was kind of like, you know, a role-playing. I was doing Issei lines and she did Koneko lines because, you know, she's cosplaying as... She's cosplaying as Koneko in, in this one. She did Aji a couple of weeks ago, which was also pretty great, but I didn't put that one up here this time. But, uh... I really loved the Koneko scene, so I wrote to her, right? I wrote to her, and I said... Ko Koniko chan, Hanaga. Kore wa nan toyu, Michi no hakayori yoku. Kore mo mata subarushi cosplay des. Totemo, totemo ni atte mas. Itsu mo arigato gozaimas, which basically means, Wow, Koniko chan, my nose is bleeding. What undescribable destructive power this is. This is another fantastic cosplay. It suits you very well. Thank you very much. And then she replies by saying, right? She says, Yappari, senpai wa hentai desu. Which basically states, After all, senpai is a pervert. And then I replied with laughter saying, Koneko-chan, Koneko-chan is always the best when it comes to cuteness. So I thought that was a really cool tweet to share with you guys today. The next tweet I have is uh, in regards to uh, Ishibumi's Twitter where he's announcing that the Blu-ray disc and uh, DVD of High School DD, High School DXD Zero is going to be released Starting, I think he said starting in July. So in July, the Blu-ray disc of High School DD Zero, where it's going to be featuring, you know, Grafia and uh, Thurzex and the Civil War is going to be coming out, along with. Short, shortly after the original release of the High School DD Hero installments. So that will be coming out. Also, you'll be looking forward to the uh, Sheen High School DD first volume, which is also going to be releasing soon. So, definitely, definitely look forward to that. And shortly after this, let's head back to the video stream. But yeah, I thought I would share that with you guys today. I mean, today's match was just epic in all its glory. They really did an excellent job with the animation and with the with especially with the character designs. The character designs definitely looked better starting at the beginning, starting in today's match than they did in the last episode and compared to the first of this arc when it started. Definitely looks a lot better. The faces are a lot more, they're better proportioned and the eyes look a lot better. So they put some extra work in for the remaining half of the uh, series. So I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to be pleased about that. Because, you know, even I noticed, you know, earlier in this arc that, you know, there were some off scenes. 
that took place. But, you know, due to budget cuts that happened because, you know, the whole disaster that was born due to TNK, you know, failing to adapt it properly, you know, due to that, the fact that they didn't adapt it properly caused the third season to flop in ratings, which then resulted in the fan base not buying the third season as much. So sales were down, which dropped the budget down, which then resulted in them having to change studios. So it was, it's kind of like a domino effect, you know? If they would have done the third season properly to begin with, we probably wouldn't would have we probably wouldn't have had a change in studio because the budget would have remained stable. The reason they were able to do the fourth season is because other sales in regards to season one and season two were still thriving, and also the merchandise sales were doing good as well. So. Due to everything else, the fourth season was still able to come out. But they had to do a whole retcon and, you know, correct some scenes that was left out due to TNK's big mess that they did. And, you know, regardless, they managed to do season four incredibly well, regardless of having to go back and fix those holes. Which, you know, is very applaudable. They did excellent doing that. But yeah, I mean, if TNK wouldn't have messed up the adaptation in Season 3, then the budget wouldn't have been lost. And there wouldn't have been a change in studio. That's, that's my guess, you know. It's the domino effect, you know. Because a lot of the fans in Japan are also huge fans of the light novel. And so, when the adaption wasn't done right in the third season, ratings for the third season dropped. Which means sales for the third season dropped, which then resulted in the budget for the next season dropping down. Which means that they had to move to a studio that their budget would fit. Because they ran out of money for TMK. Due to TNK's mess. That's my standpoint on it. So TNK caused their own demise. But, moving back into today's episode, I have to say it's one of my favorites so far. I love it. Gasper's move today was just really, really moving. I'm probably going to go back and watch the episode at least two more times. It was just absolutely fantastic. But it's already 647 and I'm going to call it a day for right now. I'll be back again next week with episode 11 stream. I hope you guys will be looking forward to that. Uh, I did put out a review. Uh, yesterday on Uma Musume, so if you haven't checked out my reviews lately, go to my channel and check it out. I put it out yesterday. It's not, you know, it's not a series that I can actually go into a lot of heavy detail on because it's a fun series, but the animation in it is, in it is incredible, and so is the storyline. It's inspiring and fun. It's just a really fun series. And I kind of went over all, all, all of that in my review that I put out yesterday, so definitely go check it out. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Oh, and one more thing. I am at least halfway done writing my uh, Darling in the Franks review. So you guys can expect it to come out shortly after the series finishes. Is finishes this season so definitely look forward to that too and until next time i'm keva talk deity catch you in the next stream